the world is changing. And despite appearances behind me, global warming is real and climate change is happening. And of course, the world's automotive manufacturers are having to adapt to this new world and make some very brave, dare I say, and some very bold decisions and possibly some unpopular ones too. Mercedes-Benz have just announced the new C63, which this time is a four-cylinder turbocharged engine rather than a big thumping V8. Audi's sports saloon, the S4, is now a diesel rather than a turbocharged V6. And what can we expect from Porsche? Well, the new Macan SUV and the new 718 Boxster and Cayman is going all electric. But there are some things which, for even the most ardent of people who know that things have to change, are still sacred. BMW, for instance. Well, their iconic M badge is 50 years old this year. But to put it on a two and a bit ton all electric SUV is possibly one of the most unpopular decisions that they've ever taken. And yet it hasn't stopped them from doing it. Welcome to a very cold Scotland. Welcome to the new BMW iX M60. And as always, welcome to Auto EV. <laughs> Now, before we get on with this week's, well, rather cold um, road test of the new BMW iX M60, it is, of course, that time when I'm going to ask you to make sure that you are subscribed to the Auto EV channel. And once you've done that, press the little bell button that's down below, because then that way you'll be notified of when our next video goes live. After you've watched the review, make sure you do give it a thumbs up if you like it, and leave us some comments, good or bad. Let us know about the channel, and let us know about the cars that we're reviewing. What do you think of the new BMW iX M60? Now, we've been here before with the iX, and we've sort of been here before with this sort of M badge on one of its i products, and we'll go into that in a little second. But first of all, a little apology, because this wasn't the review that I wanted to do. You see, I was coming to Scotland, and I wanted to bring, for the 50th anniversary of, of the, the M badge, as we don't have a full-blown electric M card as yet, I wanted to bring one of the new sort of M products, if you like, the, the, the ones that have been fettled by M department, if not a full-blooded M car, up to Scotland to drive it on my favourite road. However, as you can see, the weather has not been kind, and to deploy a two and a bit ton SUV with the level of power that this one has on a twisty mountain road in these conditions would be somewhat, well, we'll say foolhardy if we're going to be kind about it. So, we're going to just do a normal road test. Now, we've been here before with the iX because we've driven it in both the X-Drive 50 and the X-Drive 40 guises. And I'm still not sure if which one of those would be my pick of the range. So, of course, the introduction of the M60 model was the perfect excuse for me to bring it and find out if this was the one that actually that I would recommend that you plump for if you're looking at an iX. Now, we know that that's not always the case. It's not always the top of the range ones that actually are the pick of the range. With the i4, we always felt that the E-Drive 40 was better than the M50 in that range. But as I say, I've still yet to decide on the iX. So, could this be the one that I think is the pick of the iX range? Well, the only way that we're going to find out is by putting it through the road test that actual car buyers trust to deliver the true definitive verdict on new EVs. And of course, that's the Auto EV one. Now, as I say, we've been here before with the iX, so we're not going to cover up too much of the stuff we've already discussed. But we will start with styling because, as I say, as I said in the previous video, the X-Drive 40, it is still the most controversial aspect of the iX. And I did say in that video that the looks were growing on me, but not in white. I have to admit, it, it's still, yeah. I, look, th there is a huge amount of car here and there's a lot to discuss about this car and its capabilities. But looks-wise, I wouldn't choose white personally. I think in black, when everything's kind of toned down, where you don't get these kind of big kind of bits of kind of, I don't know what you'd really call it, design feature there. And of course, the big buck-tooth demented rabbit grill that isn't a grill that's filled with sensors now. I think in black, it tones the whole thing down. In the lighter colours, like white or silver, it makes everything stand out a little bit. 
What do you get with the M60, however? How do you know that you've spent a little bit extra money? Well, really from the front, there isn't a lot to really tell that you have. You've still got these beautifully thin sort of like laser LED lights, which are phenomenal at night, and the adaptive high beam assist on them is brilliant. It's the best I've ever come across. You still get the little pop-up badge where you fill up your screen wash, and as I say, you know, you've still obviously got this very controversial double kidney. But you're not going to call it a grill anymore. And as I say, I don't really like these kind of big black bits at the side, but as I say, a black one would really does really tone it all down and does make it a little bit more, well, acceptable, shall we say. What I will say about this one is it does have my more favoured black uh, trim round it rather than that Titan bronze one that we saw on the um, the X-Dry 50 that we had which I, I really don't like, it does look a bit cheap, the black is much better so do option that up if you are going for one because that is the better of the two. You get these mahoosive 22 inch alloy wheels on the car as standard and with the M you get the blue brake calipers with the, the iconic M symbol on it and of course you get the little kind of black and bronzed M badge there which I have to say I quite like it's not kind of got the the, 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 the tricolory colours that you would normally expect for an M but as I say I quite like that in the kind of black and bronze good door mirrors there's lots of cameras all around the car and of course these house mirrors here for the 360 um, parking uh, camera and you get these nice door handles all the people have had in the car since we've had it they all commented how nice the door handles are because they're recessed and they've just got the little touch pad in them it just opens them up and of course you've got your frameless doors as well which is quite unique on a on a big suv like this um black down obviously along the bottom as you can see and then your little IX embossed badge there but that's pretty much it in terms of telling that it's the m model and um, it's quite a long car, it's five metres long, so it's quite a length, um, but I wouldn't say it's particularly high, it's all right. I mean, as you know, I'm quite short, and it's, you know, I can just sort of like see over the top of it. For, so for a large SUV, it's not what you'd call a particularly tall one, but you do get a good commanding driving position, as we'll see when we're obviously out doing the performance and handling section. But yeah, as I say, I still think it's kind of grown on me a little bit, but just not in height. And round the back, well, again, it's exactly the same as we've been used to. Uh, but again, the badges are now in the kind of black and kind of bronze. And these are clear, the kind of dark and smoked rear lights. Um, and again, you get the M60 badge on this side in the black and bronze. Um, but again, you get your kind of contrasting black down there. Brilliant little camera, just tucked up in there. Uh, and what you also have is um, you've got a, a rear wash as well for that little camera. And one at the front as well. It's very clever. It just kind of pops out and gives it a bit of a wash, which is rather clever, I think. Um, recessed obviously number plate handle underneath here what I will say is the weather I've been up here has obviously as you can see it's, it's quite bad but the drive up the other day up the motorway made this car absolutely filthy it was caked on the back I've just gone and had it washed believe it or not and that's the only thing when you are putting that handle it does attract a huge amount of dirt so that is quite a filthy place so if you do do that make sure that you use the key or the interior release because as soon as you touch that your hand is absolutely caked and then of course you get and as i said before on the other tests these get absolutely filled up with dirt look as i say we're not going to go on too much about the styling of the ix because we've been here before and we all know what it's about i i, I do think it has grown on me a huge amount and as I say, it's not my favourite colour for it. I, I get it and I understand that a lot of people do like white cars. I personally would go for a really dark colour just to tone everything down a bit. And of course, the good thing is, when you're driving it, you can't really see what it looks like. And it's the drive that's the really important bit of this test. But what do you think of the iX? What do you think of the styling? Is this, is this enough? Have the M department done enough on the car? Would you like to have seen them do a little bit more? Do you think it should have an M badge on it at all? As always, let us know down in the comments. Well, seeing as we're around here, let's discuss that practicality. Now, I don't have my suitcases, but as you can see, I've got all my Christmas paraphernalia on my visit up to the family. Now, we've again, we've sort of been here before, and it's no different in the back of the 60 model, the M60, to the other. So it's 500 litres, which for a car of this size is disappointing. Um, the seats do split in the back, and as you know, you've got your buttons here which obviously flip the rear seats down and that extends the load bay through um, this car is also optioned up with um, uh, an electric tail uh, uh, what do you call it? electric tow bar as well which pops out from underneath the car he says 
Ta -da! just like magic look at that which obviously adds to the practicality because you can tow with it um, you've got some underflow storage for the cables it's not huge but it's enough and as I said before you've got this rigid kind of parcel shelf which is a bit of a pain if you need to take it off because there's not only a huge amount of places you can actually store it but I suppose for putting things like coats and you know smaller bags on the back it is quite useful but practicality yeah, it's never been the IX's biggest key um, factor and as I say I keep saying it, this big bulky tailgate it really feels like it hems you in when you're standing underneath it. Still, when it's snowing, you've got somewhere to shelter, I suppose. But if you're a regular viewer, as you'll know, it's the interior of the iX that always impresses me. Now, there's a huge amount of lounging space back here. I absolutely love this interior. Maybe not this particular colour, if I have to admit. Um, but that's by the by. The, the rear seat accommodation is good. There is absolutely acres of space back here. If I sit straight on, you can see seat set up for myself, uh, um, five foot um, seven, five foot eight. And I just have got absolutely acres of leg room and foot room and decent headroom. Of course, this one's got also got the big panoramic um, sunroof, which goes opaque at the touch of a button. Love that. The seats themselves in the back are beautifully supportive. They curve round at the back, so they give you nice shoulder support. And again, it's always been a big boon, I think, of the I iX when it does that. It is one of the best rear seats when it comes to one of these big SUVs. Um, we've got heated rear seats and uh, rear climate control in this car as well. So it's four-zone climate control, heated rear seats. You've got these rigid map pockets, you know, these airline-style seat, uh, map pocket uh, seats. Two USB-C uh, ports on the backs of each seat, which is really nice. These little flip-down things, which I think are for accessories, you know, like iPad holders and things like that, where you can plug them in there. I think that's what they're for. Um, OK door bins. They're all right. They've got some space. You certainly take a water bottle. And, of course, you've also got the central flip-down armrest, which is nice. And you've got, um, oh, he says, it's which is not going to open. The There we go rear cup holders as well now when i've been up here i've been in a friend's um seven series they've got a a, a 760 li uh, m sport which is also a huge big limousine with all sorts of you know ridiculous stuff in the middle of it but i have to say even in the back of this ix it's as comfortable i think as that car was albeit with slightly less adjustment on the rear seats that they have in theirs but i think in terms of rear accommodation this is ample for everyone you've got isofix points obviously as you would imagine on both sides of the seats and they just kind of you pull the tab and they flip up and then you can plug the seats in there so again kiddies will be fine and of course everyone's got th uh, they've got three head restraints across the back the outer two are molded so they don't adjust but they're tall enough and um, that your head is fine with them so yeah probably one of the most successful parts of the ix formula is this rear seat if you've got a family and you're going to be using it as a family suv you're not going to be short of space unless of course you've got like eight children or something ridiculous in which case well you're not going to be buying this car and of course the other big part of the ix that i'm a huge fan of is up front is this cockpit layer in fact i think it's best in class i have to be absolutely honest about that i think it knocks the audi into a cocked hat and i prefer it i do prefer it over mercedes-benz um, interiors as well with the ix they've sort of gone back to what they did with the i3 and uh, as much as we don't like sort of like the exterior of the car we love the interior because they have gone completely different they have tried to be very kind of modern in their approach to the interior of the ix and it really works for me you get this wonderful curved screen um, that's, that's angled kind of towards the driver it curves for the driver like BMW dashboards of old and the old sort of like um, e, um, the E28 5 series um, uh, and so forth and E30 M3 series I love that I love the way it just kind of curves around for you so everything's very easy to read and very easy to see um, vents are obviously are located sort of like here and then also sort of like on the side bits there and this car features a Bowers and Wilkin audio system that has some ridiculous amount of speakers. It's something like 32 speakers. That even in the seats and the the, the seats vibrate with with the bass and, and they've got them in the head restraints. It sounds phenomenal with a 4D kind of sound on it. But the rest, of, as I say, the interior itself is an absolute triumph for me. Now you can configure all of this, and as I say, we've probably talked a lot about it in the other um, iX videos. But basically, you can choose the sort of design that you see up here. Um, with this um, little toggle on this wheel here so you can choose the layout that you want on here 
um, and uh, you can, sorry, content, that's what I want, that one there, and then you can decide how you want the dashboard to be laid out. So if you want the navigation or the media up in front of you as well, um, you know, your turn to turn um, type of thing, or whether you want to see like the radar guided cruise control or your distance control, range prediction as well. And we'll talk about that in a second because that's another thing that's impressed as well. Um, yeah, or just like a big, big digital speedo, that's absolutely fine. So you can really configure this how you want. You've also got a very excellent head-up display. Um, I love the head-up display in the car as well. That is superb. Um, and the other thing that you do get as well is augmented reality on the sat-nav. So using the front camera as you're driving along, if you're about to make a turn, what it will do is it will bring up the picture, the view from the front camera and it will overlay sort of the arrows to tell you which, for instance, what lane to be in or for which junction to take off of the motorway or for how to take the junction off. So that is brilliant and it works really, really well. This is the eighth generation operating system that we've been used to, uh, sorry, you know, from BMW that used to call the iDrive. And you do still get, whilst this is touch screen, you do still get this iDrive style controller here. And the touchpad round about it, they're all, um, all the things, it works beautifully. It's, there's no buttons on it, but they're all on this wood. They've got like the little um, things to tell you what they are. So for nav, television, media, um, and you press, and it's got haptic feedback on it, so you know exactly what you're going into. You just touch it. it it's wonderful. I love it. Um, there's also uh, voice activation as well and gesture control. So you've been doing this, you can turn the volume up or turn it down, and um, that type of thing. There you go. Let's turn up there. There's a volume control here um, on the actual um, binnacle. On sorry, on the centre console here. Or you've also got physical buttons on the steering wheel, so you can control the volume all those different ways. You start stop button here, um, your gear selection uh, here. This this car's fitted with this kind of crystal applique um, kind of controls. A mixed view on that. You know, I've had people in the car go, wow, that's really nice. I've had other people go, oh, it's a bit tacky. I'm a bit on the fence with it. I'm not sure yet. So maybe for another day I'll discuss that. Um, your part brake, obviously, and your auto hold function. Storage is absolutely excellent. Um, you've got centre cubby in here, which is quite deep. You've got two. Um, this is a sort of floating console again. Let's say like they had in the sort of like the i3. So you've got a sort of slot here. You can sort of like just put your mobile in. But there is a wireless charging pad underneath here. Um, the cup holders. Well, they take my big coffee flask and my big water bottle so that's fine there's also enough room down in the doors for them as well so that's good you do get um a glove box as well so that opens up and there's enough space in there for more than just one pair of gloves which is good um as i say this car's got the big sort of panoramic uh, glass sunroof on the car will come on to options in the pricing section the seats now this is the biggest journey i've done in an iX. Um, when we had the, the X-Drive 40, I did quite a big motorway drive in it. And I didn't really find the seats um, that troublesome. The other day I was coming up to Scotland. Now it's a 350 mile um, trip from my house to, to where I am today. And I have to admit, I kind of did feel a little bit achy. I'm not sure whether it's the seats, whether I was feeling a bit, I just needed to move around. They do have massage function available in them as well you you know they've got massage seats on them so that can do it but i'm gonna stop short of saying that they are the best seats that i've been in and now that i've done a proper big trip in them i'm not quite convinced it might be one of my areas where i've got a little bit of doubt nagging me on it the driving position itself can't be faulted i mean there's a huge range of adjustment on the seats and you can adjust this steering wheel um talking of which it's a two-spoke design um, which I like. I don't particularly like the fact that it is a weird shape. I'd rather have just had a round one. And I'd, actually, a round one wouldn't have made any difference to what you see through it. Um, I just always find that just it's that bit there. When I drive, I drive like that, and I just find that a little bit uncomfortable. It's just not the most comfortable of steering wheels. Thankfully, however, it's a reasonable girth for an M steering wheel. They haven't gone down the usual route of fitting an overly thick wheel to this. And actually, it's, it's a reasonable kind of uh, girth to it, so that's okay. Uh, usual BMW column stocks which are just a delight you know you've got your proper um, and they're not these kind of ones that you know you flick and they go back to where they were they're pro they stay where they are when you put the indicators on or the wipers on you know their actual um, thingies they, they, they move with the stocks I'd say the audio system is just sensational in it 
Um, and the other thing I worthy of mention is when these seats, when you put the heating on in the climate menu, so you go into there um, and you put the heated seat on, it also heats up the armrests on the centre armrest and the doors as well. So that's quite a nice little thing. You'd always feel comfortable and the heated steering wheel. Um, talking of this, there is, um, you know, the usual um, issue, I suppose, of having the climate control buried into the... the, the um, the screen itself however what i will say is when you are driving your temperature control is always on you can always see it and the climate menu is always right at the bottom so it is just one press to get you to where that it's not you have to go through different layers and it's relatively easy to get on with i, I i've not really had a problem i have to say there's a lot in there there's a big climate menu but it's okay it's easy enough to use the actual um system itself the uh, the eighth generation system is fantastic I, I i can't fault it um it's nice and easy to use you can go straight into all the apps as well from there you can use it as a touch screen or as i say you can use this iDrive controller to go down to the one you want uh, and obviously you can have different apps in here such as you know Ringo and um, the standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which can also include things like ZapMap on it as well there's Spotify in here again so you can log straight into your Spotify account like I have um, so it's all nice and easy to use so it, I have to admit this is a very very easy um, system to live with and you know bmw have done an amazing job on this eighth generation one it works slick a couple of times i've had the carplay not connect um immediately i've had to just kind of switch it off and switch it back on again but as we know we are experiencing that on more cars as we get more kind of technical with them whilst i wouldn't forgive it on a thirty-three thousand pound mg however i certainly can't, can't forgive it for a hundred and twenty thousand pound uh, BMW, they maybe need to just concentrating on. Oh, that was me activating the voice activation. Sorry, um, they need to really, really hone that and make sure that it is a bit more slick. But as I say, it was only a couple of times, so I can't. I'm not going to harp on about it. The rest of the time, it has been absolutely faultless. And as I say, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best interiors in the business. So in terms of battery with the M60, well you still get the 105 kilowatt hour battery that you do in the xDrive 50 um, and it will give a WLTP range of around about 348 miles. So about 30 odd miles down on what they quote for the xDrive 50. But what I will say is this, obviously the temperature being there is today when I set off um, from my home in Surrey to come up here the other day, we had about... 98 99 percent charge in the car and it was showing just over 260 miles but what i will say is this it pretty much did that and by using the bmw satellite navigation it will tell you where to charge and for how long as well it is very efficient at doing that and it was bang on what it said so i stopped twice it's a 350 mile journey and i stopped twice for about half an hour each time now it will go from 10 to 80 percent in around about 35 minutes if you can find a charger capable of delivering the 185 kilowatts charging speeds that the BMW iX is able to take which is a little bit down on some other cars such as the Porsche Taycan and some of the Korean cars that we're seeing and the other thing as well is you don't get 800 volt architecture on it which is a bit of an odd thing given the fact that it is a bespoke flagship EV for BMW the other thing that it isn't capable of doing is vehicle to load which is becoming a pretty much an industry standard with new cars coming out now so there's a couple of things that possibly BMW are going to have to look at by the time they come to facelifting the car or replacing it. Well good morning it's a very cold and frosty morning it's minus three and I'm at Stafford Services apologies for the noise I don't have the microphone on and there's a very big lorry just unloading things next to me. I've just stopped on my way up to Scotland with a new BMW iX M60 and uh, I'm using these new Polar uh, rapid chargers at Stafford Services and I have to say I mean okay yeah it's 20 past 8 in the morning I've done about two and a half just under two and a half hours of driving so far with the car which has been superb I mean my goodness me it's an ugly thing but my gosh what a car to drive on a journey like this. Anyway these chargers Fantastic, uh, 150 kilowatt chargers, no problem at all, contactless payment. Um, it's not in the best place, I have to say, it's at the back of the petrol station. If I turn around, you can just kind of see there. So it's not in the best place in the world, um, but it's currently drawing 143 kilowatts 
um, and it's a, they're 150 kilowatt charge as I say it's drawn 140 kilowatts so so far so good um, the car has been superb I cannot fault this car on this journey um, it's been a pleasure to drive it's so smooth so quiet so comfortable a couple of glitches with infotainment system but maybe it's just me getting used to it I don't know anyway I'm gonna go and try and refill my coffee flask now and get some get some breakfast while the car charges up it's saying I only need a half hour charge to get me on my way so let's see how we go so second charge of the day up in Scotland um, not that I actually really needed to charge straight away but the car directed me here of all places which is Porsche Centre South Lakes and I couldn't believe it I thought I went in and asked I said you, can I use one of your chargers and they said because my car's telling me that it should do and they said yeah if you uh, I think it's um, Octopus Energy or Shell Recharge which I have then you can charge your electric car at this Porsche Centre which is newly opened it used to be the old Park and Park in Kendall it's a, a family owned Porsche dealership and now they've got this wonderful facility you can see that behind me which is without doubt in the prettiest place South Lakes in the outside Kendall anyway I'm gonna, they've asked me to have a cup of coffee and the BMW's on charge and happy days. The other good thing is, look at that. 185 kilowatts power that's delivering. Oh, fantastic. I'll top this up nicely. Thank you very much, Porsche. So, 28 minutes later at Porsche South Lakes, I'm now at 79% charge, which I've put the car into accepting my maximum charge of 80%, so I'll be on my way. I have to say, what a marvellously warm, and especially on a cold day, welcome I have had here at Porsche Centre South Lakes, especially from their product pro, um, Ashley, who's been spending her morning talking to me about all things Porsche and discussing electric cars and everything. So, and this place is absolutely wonderful. Now, take it from me, coming from uh, a sales background of 28 years, um, this is a fantastic dealership. So if you're after a new Porsche, I can thoroughly recommend coming to these guys, Porsche Centre, South Lakes. So, anyway, let's get back on the road and head north. Now, as you'd expect with a BMW wearing the M badge, it's going to have M type of performance. And the M60 does not disappoint. This car has a simply gargantuan. 619 brake horsepower but it's not that figure that startles me it's the torque 1100 newton meters of torque that is enough to propel this leviathan from rest to 60 miles an hour in 3.8 seconds that is simply a mind warping speed as far as i'm concerned and i can't begin to tell you how fast this car actually feels. I can't take it on my favourite road today, unfortunately, because of the weather. But what I will say is this. The performance this car gives, you know, even in these sort of like wintry conditions, is simply outstanding. And it's not just straight line speed. It's not just the way in which it goes from rest to warp speed in the blink of an eye that impresses. It's the chassis control. And I think this is quite simply one of the best SUVs that I've driven because of that. It has a huge amount of grip, an absolutely staggering amount of grip. It sticks like, well, a snowball to a blanket, if I'm being honest with you, if I'm being polite. It's just crazy speed but on top of that you've also got a car that is quiet that is apart from when the radio does that which is the traffic information that i can't seem to get rid of it's a car that is as quiet and as refined and is just simply relaxing to drive as this can be it's a proper double-edged sword this car one minute you can take it by the scruff of the neck when the roads are dry and just throw it down a twisty road and have confidence in what the car is doing. The next, you can stick it on the motorway, set the cruise control at around about 70 miles an hour, sit back, listen to the radio and just waft along. It is simply staggering the, the, the ability that this car has. There are different driving modes in the vehicle as well, and they're accessed by this button down here, the My Modes button, it comes up on the screen. Personal, um, efficient, expressive, relaxed, and it's one of these BMWs where it's got Hans Zimmer 
sound in it as well. So if I put on, let's say, expressive. Now, if I accelerate, I don't know if you can hear this. There we are. That's a nice expressive sound. Feels really weird. And it also activates the seat massage in a different way as well, which you can do away with as far as I'm concerned. I don't particularly like those. Um, what else have we got? We've also got um, sport. Now, sport sounds differently. That almost sounds like an engine noise, almost. A kind of electronic engine noise. Sounds really weird. I kind of like it, I have to say. The more and more I, I play with these things, the more and more I'm starting to really quite like them. Because, you know, it's just... It's different. It's how EVs are going to help us engage with them. And there's no point in having kind of synthesised or fake engine sounds. Do something different, by all means. And have Zimmer in your bimmer. I love that. I really do. Um, what else is there to say about the car? Well, it, it's a beautiful car to drive. As I say, it can be this real double-edged sword where you've either got this real sort of like sporty, um, engaging performance SUV, which has got an astounding amount of power, or you can just dial it all back and just sit there and relax. But it's the everyday as well that actually the car does really well. It's easy to drive. It's easy to get on with. I've got good visibility maybe a tiny bit over the shoulders, lacking a little bit, and there's a slightly kind of smaller screen at the back. That's not ideal, but it's okay. Um, you know, you've got um, easy to see controls. This driver interface, as I say, is one of the best. I absolutely love it. I got on with it so well, um, and has been a real boon, in, you know, sort of like on this long journey that I've been doing with the car. They're just easy to live with, and I really like it. Dashboard's nice and easy to clear. You can configure it how you want it. The brakes are worthy of a mention, they are phenomenally good brakes. And also the regen, so you can either do it via this toggle switch down here where it's in D and you bring it back to B mode, where the car will activate its brake regen, almost kind of one pedal driving. Or you can set it so that it's in a sort of um, an automatic sort of way where it will actually use the GPS location. So for instance, if it knows that I'm coming up to a corner or a roundabout, it'll apply a more aggressive regen than if I'm sitting just on the motorway and just trundling along. And also use the front camera, so if the car in front really slows down quite abruptly, and I go for the, when I lift off the pedal, it will know and it will start to activate the brakes as well. So all very, very clever. The ride comfort is superb. And as you go again from the different driving modes, you get a different feel to the chassis dynamics. So, I mean, at the moment I'm in relaxed, so the suspension's a bit more soft, it slackens everything off, you've got a bit more roll in the corners, it's fine, there's a bit more compliancy to it. You go into sport and everything tightens up, everything hunkers down, everything feels much firmer, the body control's um, really adapted, uh, it stays much more flat through the bends. It's a hugely impressive car. I mean, it really is. I mean, forget the way that the iX looks because you can't see how it looks from in here, from the driver's seat. Go and drive one of these iX M60s if you're in the market for a performance SUV because this thing is simply staggering what it's capable of doing. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was its range. And I know we talked about it a bit in the usability section, but the sat-nav, I, I decided not to bother with Apple CarPlay coming up and I, I plugged, other than listening to music, what I did was I used the BMW sat-nav. And what it did was, um, and a lot of cars do this, don't get me wrong, this isn't BMW being clever, this happens to a lot of cars, a lot of EVs. But the sat-nav predicted where I need to stop and for how long I need to stop and what charge I needed to put into it. And it would tell me what I would have left, so it knows what I've got at the moment, it would tell me what I should arrive with and what percentage of battery, how long I should stop for and how much charge I should put it in. And it was absolutely bang on accurate. It was superb at doing that. So again, the technology in the car works with you and it just makes living with a big performance EV like this so much easier. And a 350 mile drive in this car was absolute breeze. I had no worries whatsoever that it was going to do exactly as it said on the tin. This thing is one of the very best electric cars I've driven. 
it is absolutely phenomenal what it is capable of. As you'd expect for the price tag, don't get me wrong, but trust me when I say you've got to look past the looks of this car because its capabilities are absolutely phenomenal. I think this could be my favourite of the iX range. Hey BMW, stop seat massage. I will deactivate the seat massage for your seat. Voice activation that recognises my Scottish accent. I like that too. Now, the iX is BMW's flagship and the M60 is the flagship of that flagship. So you won't expect a very small price tag to be with that. And you'd be correct. It starts at £116,000. This particular car I've got is optioned up to just a tickle under £121,000. But bear in mind the AIX range does start from just under £70,000 for the xDrive 40. Is it worth the extra money to go for something like this? Is it worth that huge jump up, nearly £50,000 in price? You'll need to watch the end of the video to find out. Now, at that price, you're also in quite a rarefied section of the market in terms of competition, if you are looking at pure EVs. But that's not to say that they're not around, but you just have to be maybe a little bit more broad in your spectrum of cars. Now, of course, Audi have just revised the e-tron, so it's now called the Q8 e-tron, and with the S model of that, then obviously you are looking at a price tag of six figures, which would be a direct rival for this car. And although we haven't driven the new Q8 e-tron, we weren't exactly blown away by the old e-tron S, as it were, the triple motor one. Despite its big performance, it did fall short in a lot of areas. So we'll be interested to see whether the new Q8 e-tron is much more of a tougher rival for this. Mercedes-Benz, well, of course, they've just announced the EQS SUV and they're gonna be doing an EQE SUV as well. And of course, we would expect AMG versions of those along any second soon. So they're gonna be rivals, natural rivals for this M60. But as I say, moving away from SUVs, you've also got Porsche's Taycan, which is available both in Cross Turismo and Sport Turismo, guys, if you want that sort of practical, more practical car over the regular Taycan saloon. And we can't really ignore the Jaguar I-Pace as well, so it is down on power on this, but again, with options, it's still a good car to drive despite its age. It is still a car that we would probably consider to be a rival to something like the iX. And of course, we await to see what's going to happen with Jaguar. As they say, they're going to be all electric from 2025 onwards. What do they have in the works for us? Do they have anything in the works for us? We've yet to see. Next year, of course, is the big one. It is, of course, the fully electric Range Rover, which is going to be a very much a direct rival for this, especially if they do an all-electric Range Rover Sport, because what um, Jaguar Land Rover are now doing is pushing the Range Rover way up market, almost saying that it is a Bentley and Rolls-Royce rival now, and maybe it's the Sport, if they do an all-electric version of that, that would be a natural rival for the iX M60. So there is certainly a lot to choose from. So here's what we like and what we don't like about the BMW iX M60. We like its comfort and refinement, the interior design and use of materials and technology, its searing performance, spacious interior, and its capable chassis for size of vehicle. We don't like, well, the styling is still very divisive, the boot space is small for this size of car. It can get scarily expensive. The electrical architecture isn't the big leap forward for a flagship EV that we would like to see. And we're still not convinced that it truly deserves the iconic M badge. I have a wonderful job. I have absolutely no doubt about that and whatsoever because I am very very lucky that I get to drive the type of vehicles I do. Some of which impress me more, some of which impress me slightly less. But I always like to be surprised by a car and I have to say that I am being very surprised by the iX M60. I was really looking forward to this drive but I don't think I'd appreciate how much I was looking forward to this drive. Bringing this car on this trip up to Scotland has been an absolute eye-opener for me when it comes to this car. No, I didn't get to do the road test that I wanted to do. I was desperate to take it 
on my favourite road, but I think that's probably another test for another time and another video. But going back to the M60, that disappointment of not being able to drive it on my favourite road doesn't translate into a disappointment in this car. Now, when we've tested the iX before, we've always said that we weren't quite sure what the pick of that range was. It was easy with the i4, but I was never quite sure with the iX. This, to me, is the pick of the iX range. Because if you're going to have a stupid car, if you're going to have a silly car, you may as well have the silliest of them all. And this car, with this level of power and this capability, is very, very silly indeed. With a price tag to match, of course, don't get me wrong. I have been absolutely astounded at the capabilities of this car. I am, without doubt, now going to stand here and say that I think this is the pick of the iX range. I think the M60 is the one to have. So if you can stretch to it, then it is the one to have. Would it be my choice if I was in the marketplace with this level of price tag? No, I would probably still walk past it and go down to the Porsche showroom and tick the box for a Taycan Cross Turismo. But I might just pause as I walk past the BMW showroom and ponder that thought. Thank you once again for watching another episode of Auto EV from a very cold but very beautiful Scotland. As always, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and once you've done that, press the little bell button that's down below because then that way you'll be notified of when our next video goes live. If you've watched the review and you've enjoyed it, please remember do give it us a thumbs up and leave us some comments down below. Good or bad, let us know how we're doing as a channel. Let us know your thoughts on the BMW iX or any of the cars that review for that matter. Do you think I'm right? Do you think this is worth the money? Do you have one on order? Do you drive an X-Drive 40 or 50 and think I'm absolutely, as we would say up in Scotland, havering? Remember, we're across all social media platforms too. So, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, give us a follow there as well because every little bit helps. And if you're just whiling your way, oh, actually you're waiting for Christmas to appear and you're a bit bored, then stick on our YouTube channel because there's now well over 100 videos of road test reviews, electric icons, van reviews, twin tests, used car reviews, and of course motorbike reviews by guest presenter Charlie Berman. All that remains for me to say is thank you ever so much for watching and supporting Auto EV. Thank you for putting up with me in my native country and as I say, a rather cold Scotland. All that's left for me to say is thank you once again. I'll see you again soon. So, you've watched our video. It's now my job to tell you to like and subscribe and press the little bell button to receive notification of when our next video is uploaded.